Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us today in our Tesla Model 3 performance here in Sydney, Australia. We're looking at software update 2022.44.30. And uh, in terms of release notes, there's actually not too much to report uh, apart from what was released for the 2022.40.25 release, which was essentially the holiday release. But there is one feature that I'd like to highlight and uh, and discuss in more detail, and that's, and that's this one, the automatic indicator mode. So previously, prior to this update, uh, when you indicate, either left or right, you could either half indicate, and I won't demonstrate, otherwise the indicators will come on, you can half indicate, and that used to blink three times, and that was useful for merging into another lane, or you could flick it all the way down or up, and that would keep the indicator on the whole time, right? And and that's great. So you've got that discrete function between lane change or if you want to turn left or right, you can turn it on all the way, uh, turn it on fully. But now with this indicator uh, mode update, uh, now if you were to put the, uh, let's just say the three clicks were not enough when you half indicated, right? And you wanted more, you'd have to re-click again or you'd have to uh, click it down all the way to have the indicator on all the time and then release it once you're done lane changing. But now with this new feature, uh, what's really cool now is that you can actually say, for example, I want to lane change to the left, uh, but I take a bit longer than my three clicks. Let's go half click like this. Okay, so but I'm taking a bit longer, right? Because, for example, if there was a car behind me, I would take longer than three clicks. But now, when I'm fully over, the indicator switches off by itself, which is great, which is really good. Um, you can also indicate back by... Uh, indicating all the way, so if I were to go full indicate, right, to the right, so if I switch lanes now, see, it switches off by itself, that's fantastic, um, and that's just a little improvement there, it's a little quality of life improvement, but it's, it makes a difference, I think, if, uh, you know, otherwise in the past, if I were to fully click down or up to, in, to switch over, I'd have to turn it off again later on. What's also useful too is, um, for example, I'm going to show you later on when I merge to a filter lane, uh, it'll keep indicating until you've made that turn. And that seems to work pretty well. It's not perfect. I've been in situations where it it, uh, it would stay on or when it didn't need to or it would stay off, vice versa. But overall, I found it's it's been pretty useful. So let's try that again. Uh, three clicks or the half press down two, three, four, five, but slower lane change and once I'm fully over, the car knows that, uh, the blind spot monitor goes off and the indicator goes off as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. I think that's a, a really good improvement there. Okay, so owning a Tesla is fantastic of course, but one of the few things that the Tesla can't do, which other EVs can do, is vehicle to load, which is basically using the car to power an appliance or a device. So one way to uh, get around that is to purchase something like this, a portable battery, and this one is from EcoFlow, 1.2 kilowatt hours, and it can power up to 1.8 kilowatts. On this side, you can have four uh, 10 amp AC plugs. Okay, so I'm gonna plug my kettle into this device here. So this is the regular household 10 amp plug, straight in there, and then press and hold to start. Okay, let's... At this rate, if we were to keep boiling the kettle forever, well not forever, but uh, using the battery's life at 94% state of charge, we'd have 39 minutes remaining and it's basically extracting almost the uh, entire output of the battery at 1.79, almost 1.8 kilowatts. Okay, so there we go. The kettle is boiled using power from the EcoFlow battery. So again, if you uh, really need that cup of tea when you are out and about camping or just enjoying a picnic, uh, then this might be for you, or even just handy around the house as well uh, as a backup storage device. Okay, so here's an example of changing into a lane that eventually becomes a filter lane to turn left. So here we are, I'm in this lane now. That's a filter lane on my left. I'm going to indicate half to the left Okay, 
So there you go, it's completed the lane change, but I want to turn left. And that's a perfect example of how that works, how the cameras are picking up that it's a filter lane, uh, and I've indicated left to go into that lane, but it hasn't clicked off. Uh, it's continued to indicate because it knows I'm in the filter lane now, and I want to turn right. Here's another example of changing lanes to the right, and again, it's clicked off by itself, even though I had the full indicate on, and now I'm gonna go half indicate. I've completed the lane change, and it's clicked off by itself. That's super handy, super handy, very useful indeed. Okay, let me show you one more time. After these parked cars, I wanna turn left. I'm gonna to go to a new filter lane on my left, half indicate to the left, into the lane, completed the lane change, but the indicator sound continues and the blinkers come on as needed. As I wait to turn left, how good is that? Okay, so one more edge case here to test. Uh, this one is a funny looking lane marker. It's got left, right and straight. Okay, so I've clicked the indicator on. Uh, I guess it's assuming that I want to turn left, even though I could potentially be going straight. So that's one edge case where it may not be as clear. I mean, I could potentially have wanted to go straight or even turn right from this lane. So I guess the car is not to know uh, and is not up to reading my mind yet. And one more edge case to test. Uh, these two lanes here are turning left. Uh, if I want to turn left from this lane, uh, half indicate again. That's okay, I'm staying in this lane. Uh, it's keeping the indicator on for me, so I can turn left from this lane. Okay, and the final test I want to do today, before we sign off, is that I'm hearing reports that um, the autopilot nag, which is basically the car telling you to keep the hands on the wheel and to wiggle the wheel a bit while you're on autopilot, uh, is a bit decreased compared to previously for this 30 update. So once we cross uh, the bridge here, we'll put autopilot on when the speed limit goes to 80. Here we go. All right, double tap, right stalk down. Got the rainbow road on. There you go, an old's glory. All right. So this bridge is really good for testing uh, autopilot, which is auto steer with adaptive cruise, cruise control, as it keeps the car centered in the lane. I mean, it's only a very short test, but we'll see what happens. Ooh, big pothole there. I think we'll go fast enough not to feel it. Okay, well, that was pretty good. Um, I didn't have to uh, wiggle the wheel at all. There was no nag coming up, but admittedly that was only a very short test. Let's uh, match the speed limit here by half tap right down on the right stalk. Let's see how my max autopilot speed matched the cruise control speed limit. And then adaptive cruise control kicks in by matching the leading car's speed ahead of me. Okay, not a single nag so far, but like I said, it's uh, just a very short test. So we can't draw any sort of meaningful conclusions yet from this little test. But certainly no worse uh, after this update that I can see. It's nice that uh, Rainbow Road. Ooh, wide intersection, see what happens. Ooh, that took it pretty well that time. Okay, well that's it. We'll take autopilot off. All right, everyone, that's it for me, Tesla Tom. Uh, for software update 2022.45.30 uh, sorry, .44.30 thanks for watching, stay safe and until the next video happy charging